How y'all doing? Seems like y'all doing okay. Jesus. What if we uh, what if we get aggressive? Is that all right? I might just I might just get aggressive with y'all. We'll see. I've been taking my time to see how y'all can respond. Y'all deem to be doing all right. <clears throat> I feel this is the third day for me to be here, right? I think it is. And uh, I don't know how far I'm going to get because I feel something happening to me. And so uh, I'm going to report to you right in the beginning. It's not my fault. First John chapter 3. I haven't been finishing these verses. I've been starting with y'all. So just fill in the blanks. <laughs> just take your wildest imagination and your low. Okay? Those verses I've been giving y'all and the things that I haven't completed on them, uh, take your wildest imagination and I know you're not going to reach high enough. Because the Bible, my Bible says that Whatever things I can think about, Jesus is going to do greater. And I have a pretty serious imagination. You can just sit and think of Jesus taking over countries and everybody getting saved and everybody getting healed and having a wonderful time together with the Holy Ghost. So it's going to be fun, isn't it? You know, I've been talking to you all about some new terms. Uh, you know, loyalty, commitment, those kind of things. And, and so I want to responsibility and discipline. So I want to talk about that just for a minute. Just, just get right out the gate and just start talking about something serious. All right, I, everything I've been telling y'all is coming from a lifer's perspective. Okay? I don't even understand an ego that would think you're doing something just by going because you're an American and thinking that because you're that and you go somewhere for two or three weeks that you're going to save the world. Jesus came, gave his entire life for it and then died for it. That's how he, that was his opinion of saving the world. So I suggest to you to think whatever your arm of ministry is, that's not important to me. It is to you and to God and the kingdom of God. But that's not what I'm, my beef is. My beef is not that. My beef is resumes and egos. There's nations burning in hell today because of egos and resumes. Okay? <laughs> we really do want y'all to come and the ones of you that feel like you can you're welcome to come and see short term is for the purpose of finding out the will of God for you not building a resume short term is for the purpose of learning from people that have experience so that you can become a lifer and change a nation for God. Okay? So I don't understand the terms, these new terms. I come up here, every time I come up for, after a year or two, you'll have all kind of new sayings, and I have to, un, first of all, learn what they are, and then get them all defined. But every year I come up, every two years I come up here, all I get is new terms because everything else is running the same. I'm not any better than anybody else. I'm just a person that enjoys getting on an XR600 Honda and going out to where nobody else has ever been 
and just telling them Jesus is king. That's, that's all I do. That's what I like to do. And so I want to encourage you. Now, what I'm fixing to say next, I mean every word of it. I've got a dog by the name of J.J. Very few of you are going to even understand or know what kind of a dog he is. It's called a leopard-spotted Catahoula cur. I have a whole bunch of those kind of dogs. But I have this male dog that's my friend. J.J., he weighs approximately 120 pounds. And he's just as aggressive in the dog world as I am against the devil in the human world. And he means business, just like I do. I've been gone on itineration. I had to leave him at our office, and he's been lonely, and he wants to go to Mexico, just like I do. The other day, I got back there with this new pickup truck, one-ton Ford crew cab. We was rigging it out. I took that dog. Listen to this. I said, come here, dog. He comes over there. This white Ford pickup truck, it's my truck. So he went and smelled of the tires. And I went and opened my, my driver's door. I said, come up in here, dog. He jumps up in there. I said, this is where I'm going to be driving, dog. I said, now come here. We went around to my wife's side of the truck. I opened up the car door. I said, get up in here. I said, this is my wife's side of the truck, dog. And I went to the back door of this crew cab, I opened up, I said, now this is where my kids are going to be getting out and in and out of this truck, dog. This is our pickup truck. It makes it your pickup. I'm talking to this dog just like I'm talking to you right now. That dog looked at me. I got witnesses over here. That dog looked up at me. Of course, he can't say nothing. He ran around to the back of that pickup truck and jumped in there and you could not get him out of it. Isn't that something? There were several people that tried. <laughs> including my oldest son, who's a big old boy, 25, he's big as I am. He's, he goes back there, come here dog. That dog says, uh -uh. That dog is loyal to me to the death. That dog stayed in that pickup truck. I don't know. He may still be in that thing. <laughs> I'd have to go somewhere. And get, I'm getting it rigged out for the field, and I'd have to I'd, I'd put the tailgate down. Get out, dog. He'd jump out and jump right back in. Poof. He obeyed me, but just for a second, get right back in. Listen. Even animals understand loyalty and commitment their place but we modern Christians don't understand that stuff we're free no you're rebellious I'm following Jesus no you're not you're sectarian Church, listen to me. If an old hound dog can understand and be taught by the Holy Ghost what I want, surely we can be told by the Holy Ghost what God wants. Come on now, this is true. I'm impressed with that because... I just don't see it. I see new terms and new phrases. I see different manifestations. But where's the loyalty? Where is the commitment? Where is the zeal to have the greatest crown of all from the king? I see plenty of zeal to get my ministry going. In the first place, you don't own a thing. You are bought with a price. <laughs> okay 
I can improve this. I'm walking in the jungle one day. My old truck broke. And I'm walking down through the, wa through the water and the mud of the jungle and it's raining monsoon and I'm not enjoying it very well and I'm wishing it was you there, not me. And I'm trudging through that stuff and there's a village over there that I gave my word to that I'd be there. So I've got to go and it take, it's, it, it'll take me all afternoon to get there and I'll have to preach there, spend the night and then hike to another village the next day because my truck's broke. And I'm walking down through this horse trail and I'm hearing all of a sudden through all the thunder and the lightning and the monsoons and everything that's going on, I hear a motor coming. I thought, my Lord, who else could be out here? I'm the only one out here. And it up drives a Carta Blanca truck. That's a beer truck. It's the newest equipment available. Four-wheel drive, about a three or four-ton truck, just loaded with beer. And I'm standing there, God, please touch these demons' hearts to let me have a ride. <laughs> and they're plowing through that mud. And when they got there, the guy turned his wheel and mud covered me. <clears throat> and that made me hostile, of course. And I knelt down in that mud and I told Jesus, look, kill me, I don't care. Run me ragged, I don't care. But it ain't God for the devil to have better equipment than me. Your used shoes, keep them. You wear them on out. I don't want to wear them out or burn them, whatever I do with them. Okay? And the Holy Ghost didn't say a word to me. I was alone and weeping and I finished my little mud journey to the village and the Indian women brought me a bucket of water and a rag and I cleaned myself up and I was wringing wet and they took my clothes and they dried them while I preached the gospel. And I walked out the next day in the mud to the next village and kept on walking. But ever since that day, the Lord Jesus has given me a brand new four-wheel drive, the best there is a civilian vehicle, at least one, sometimes two, and even occasionally three a year. I never know where they're coming from. I've tried to figure it up. I think I've had in the last 20 years, I've had about 25 or 27 new trucks. I use them, get them rigged out, get the bugs out of them, and usually give them to one of the guys I work with. Because me and Jesus got this understanding. I go, he goes with me. And we both ride in my new pickup truck. <laughs> All right? Jesus is with you. Jesus is with loyalty. Jesus is with responsibility. Jesus is with commitment. Jesus is with discipline. Anything else, he's not with it. I want power. Get discipline, you'll get power. I want to minister. Get loyalty, he'll let you minister. I want a nation. Get responsibility, he'll give you many nations. First John chapter 3. Because I'm going to tell you a couple of things right now that's fixing to really get test your ability to believe. Not whether I can do it, but whether you can. I can do it. 
Jesus is with me. But I've got to somehow get you to understand that he's just as much with you as he is with me. There is absolutely zero difference in us. Probably, I'm, I've been telling you this all week, you're smarter than I am, I know that. You're prettier. You have better... I feel so incapable and inadequate about being up here. And in myself, that's the truth. But in Jesus, that is not the truth. Verse 8. He that commits sin is of the devil. People ask me all the time, how do you know, are you so quick to quote something as being a devil? Well, anything that sin is a devil. It says it right there to my, in my Bible. The devil sins from the beginning. Now this, this last phrase is one of the most popular, most powerful things there is. Why did Jesus come here? Why to save humanity? Jesus came here for the purpose of destroying the works of the devil. Where does Jesus live? In us. Your job in life is to destroy the works of the devil. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Look, a while back, I'd say probably, it's been under a year, there was this, uh, this plague that came through. It's called Sarampio Negro. It came through. This is fixing to test you a good bit, and I'm happy that I can get to do that. It swept through a village, lots of villages, lots of people died, thousands and thousands of Indians are dying. It's a plague, it's a demon. Our furthest work out, our mission church, one of them, it's uh, way out there, it's several hour hike from uh, one, of the, one of our strong churches, Chico Namel. Well, way on out there, about eight or nine hours, there's another work out there, hiking through the woods. And this lady, uh, she's, she's a widow, and um, she's got a few kids, and she's alone there with the gospel. And this gospel's all over her, and uh, San Rampion Negro comes, and uh, I mean, here we got a widow, and, and we got children, and you'd figure God would surely protect her. Well, San Rampion Negro swept through, and it killed two of her teenage daughters. All right, she doesn't have any help. The place is overwhelmed because of so many people dying with this disease. She went to the town council for help, the village, and they said, we're sorry. There's so many deaths. We cannot dig the holes fast enough. You're gonna have to take care of them yourself and just put them in a line and we'll get to your daughters whenever we get the holes dug. You got a lady, a little grandma lady, getting to be a grandma lady, that she has to take her dead daughters, tie a rope around them and put them around her and drag them to where the line is of the dead. So she drags those baby girls, those teenage daughters of hers, to the line up to be buried. Took her all day to do that. She drug them over there. I'm talking about her own flesh and blood. She's alone. So she brought her daughters over there. Then there was no one to help her, so she had to go get a sack of kal, lime. The jungle is unforgiving, and, you, and then one of the ways they try to curtail this, these, the spread of these diseases is they, they cover things with lime. It kills disease, and, on and so forth and so on. And so She's got her daughters laying there, so she had to go get one of those 45-kilo uh, 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 bags of, of lime and carry it on her back, back to where the daughters was. She had to slice that thing open and then cover her daughters in lime. That took her all day to do that. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> I 
I can feel it. It's like it's good. I can feel it. It's all over me. I like it. Man. <laughs> so the first day is gone. The second day. She takes off hiking at daylight by herself. Her daughters are dead. She hikes through the jungle to our first church, Chiconamel. She gets to Chiconamel. What does she find? She finds the pastors and the elders together in the middle of an extended fast. <laughs> <laughs> She don't find them down at the Oster Bar eating 14 ounce steaks. She don't find them at the Five Star Hilton. Jesus! That's where she finds them. At the altar of God Almighty. I like it. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she hiked nine hours by herself through those woods and over those mountains to get to what the only help she knew to go to, thanks be to God forevermore, she went to Jesus, and the purpose for Jesus being alive is to destroy the works of the devil. And premature death is a work of the devil. And it must be destroyed then, right? Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 Jesus <laughs> your name is like honey <laughs> oh my lips I love you you, you're pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, Yahoo! <laughs> and so, the pastor, the wives asked her, could she wait? Now, let's move that scenario to an American situation. You come to me and I say to you, wait, you kill me. But our people trust the man of God. Because they have to. There's no one else to turn to. And so the ladies, the pastor's wives attended to her and asked her could she please wait until dark and so they waited and hours later the pastor came out and found out what was going on he said we will go in the morning because tonight we are going to pray all night <laughs> there's something more important than death and life it's the presence of Jesus. <laughs> and so, she said, okay. So the pastor's wives graciously take her and are very hospitable to her and take care of her and love her and uh, encourage her. And So at daylight in the morning, the pastors come out of their little room they get their wives and they go with her and they hike another nine hours. This is the third day. 
Did you hear what I just said to you? Okay. They get to the situation and they find that the, the daughters are very near to be buried now. But they're not buried yet. They're right on it. The head pastor and the associate pastor, each one of them straddle one of those girls covered in lime and decayed bodies. And they straddle them. And they call them by name. And both of those girls stand up raised from the dead. And it's not my fault. It's Jesus' fault. It's not my fault. It's Jesus' fault. Sarampio Negro was defeated. Premature death spirits defeated. Doubt, unbelief destroyed. The name of Jesus exalted. Well, a couple of days later, I was there in Chikonamel. And I was sitting around with the people, and they, people started coming in from all these different villages. And I'm sitting there, and I begin to hear, I, I can speak language now, Aztec, and I was listening. And I was listening and listening, and all of a sudden I heard this word, Mikis pan amansi inemiles. Mikis is dead. Panemans, it means right now. Inemilis means they've been given life. And I said, whoa, excuse me for eavesdropping, but who was dead and who now has life? I want to know about this. And those girls were sitting right there and I was on the ground blubbering like a little child. As the mother, the widow, came trembling and kneeled at my feet with tears in her eyes. Thank you, Brother David, for bringing the gospel that has raised my two daughters from the dead. <laughs> That's fun. All of the distress, all of the dismay, all of the problems, all of the hurt, all the worry, all the doubt, all the unbelief is pretty small when that starts happening. <laughs> all the worries of life just have some, they go somewhere. I don't know where they go, but they disappear. And all you can do is worship Jesus. I want you to read this with me and I want to know if your Bible says something similar to what mine does. My Bible says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Does y'all's Bible say that? Yeah. Or something similar? Where is the Spirit of God? Where is He? Where is He? I don't understand what you're saying. Me too. He's on me. And it doesn't matter how you look at me. You can look down at me, up at me. You can esteem me. You can degrade me. You can try to intimidate me. You can fuss at me. You can do anything you want. It's not going to change the fact that that mighty Holy Ghost is on me. It may not feel good to my emotions. I may not like it. I may, I may as a matter of fact, I probably won't appreciate it very much at all. But it's not going to change the fact that that great and powerful and mighty Holy Ghost is on me. Okay? He's on me. And where I go, He goes. And when you go into villages and you preach the gospel with authority and power, He stays where you go because everywhere the soles of my feet go, I can possess it for the Lord Jesus Christ. He gives it to me. It's mine. 
It doesn't matter what devil's there. It doesn't matter what coven of warlocks. It don't make any difference what the prince or power's name is. It matters who Jesus is. It doesn't matter the disease, it doesn't matter the carrier, it doesn't matter political situations, guns, bullets, none of the, Jesus is what matters. Because I got some proof. I think it's Luke 4. Yeah, it is. Look over there with me just for a second. How are we doing? Y'all doing all right? I wish the whole world could feel what I feel. Man, I feel the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And it feels real good. <laughs> and He has sent me to preach the gospel, to proclaim Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this. There's a story I'm fixing to tell you, and it has a purpose. There's a couple of people in here that I think need to hear this. <clears throat> but I want to read you this here in 18, 4 Luke. It says, chapter 4, verse 18, it says, what does it say in y'all's Bible? I know what mine says. Y'all says something just about exactly like mine does. So I don't understand why you don't or can't or won't or don't allow Jesus to flow through you to do what he wants to do. And that is destroy the works of the devil. You don't have the right to stop him. You are his friend. Let him go through you. Don't try to hold him, bottle him for your own pleasure. Let him run through you. The more you let him go through you, the greater he lets you be with him. He likes it. He carries you to greater dimensions, greater levels, more heights, places you've never understood, places other people's never understood either. We was in a village, a big campaign, several thousand people in Las Placetas. We run out of food. The brothers come and get me. What are we going to do? We've got to feed these masses of people. We don't have enough food. There's more people came than we thought. I said, come here. We all gathered around them old copper pots. And all those animals that had given their life for the gospel were in those pots. And we begin to pray over those pots and over those beans and over that rice and over those stacks of tortillas and over those buckets of coffee that were there. And we begin to feed the people and when we got through feeding those three or 4,000 people, whatever it was, all the food that we fed when we went back to the pots was still in the pot. Ooh. Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me and I want you to look at verse 21 what does it say the first two words come on somebody talk to me see y'all all got about a thousand different words out there he began to say unto them what Today, this day, it is fulfilled in your ears. You are still waiting for something that has already happened. It's happened, I tell you. <laughs> what are you waiting on? It's already happened. Well, I don't feel who said you's gonna. I don't understand. Who said Jesus is going to? Well, I never saw. That ain't our fault. You got to study to show yourself approved. 
you got to submit to the Holy Ghost. you got to allow him to show you the devil is blinding us to truth. I'm telling you, Jesus said the day years ago, and we're still waiting on some greater revelation. There is none. Jesus is the revelation. I'm on my way to church one afternoon and I am a pretty shouty fella. I shout a lot. You better. And I'm walking down through there with four or five of us fellas and I'm walking down through there, a whole string of Indians. Everywhere we go, it's a large entourage. I, it just gets bigger every year. I can't go anywhere without bunches of people wanting to go. And, and that's okay, it's fun. And so we're traipsing through the woods there and we're worshiping Jesus. We get to this village. I'm not gonna tell you the name, it's a hotbed. We get there, we preach the gospel. We come back through the woods. We're shouting and worshiping Jesus. In the very village where we was, these men come straight through there. There's about 25 of them. Had these automatic weapons of every kind of description and sort. And this wealthy fella comes out in town, encounters these fellas, begins to rip them up one side, chew them out, fuss at them, cuss at them, everything else. Because he had hired these people, contracted these people, paid several million pesos for them to kill all of us. We walked right by them. They never saw us. And I am not a quiet individual whenever I don't think danger's around. And when I do think danger's around, I am more vile yet. Just ask the devil, he'll tell you. A lot of y'all listen to him a lot. <laughs> Yahoo. <clears throat> the man got so violent because we went right by him. And when we left around 11 o'clock that night, we went right back by him in the dark. None of us, none of the Indians, none of us saw him. God spared us because of his infinite wisdom and mercy and grace. Because the Spirit of God is upon us. Because he fulfilled the scriptures for me. So that I could walk with him in the Holy Ghost. Is that true or not? So then we just might as well go out and do exploits. Isn't that what Brother Daniel said? Be strong. And do exploits. Okay, I think I will. Man, you're out of your mind. No, I'm out of your mind. I am in the mind of Christ. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, the weapon is pulled. Are y'all mad enough yet or can I get going some more? I'm really working on that today, aren't I? This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So I don't really understand what the world, church world I'm talking about, where I live, where we all exist. What, what are you waiting on to allow the power of heaven to flow? Jesus has done it. He's fulfilled it. It's complete. We are not lacking anything. We are only lacking confidence and trust in Him. Because it is done, Brother Mike. You know that more than I do. We've got to let Him go, man. We've got to let Him be Lord. We've got to let Him be Señor y Salvador de nuestras vidas. We've got to let Him go. He is Lord and Savior of our lives. And he feels good, I can tell you that. Thank you, Jesus. See this black magic warlock, which y'all, most of y'all don't even believe that they exist. And, you know, it's different where you are in the United States. And Oh, that's just because you don't want to get serious. You like your hamburgers too much and you'd rather eat them than fast. And, ah, that's the way you are. 
till some guy like me comes along and fusses at you a little bit. Then you'll take a, a short spurt and you'll do good and then you'll regress back into your decadency. Your apathy. And it's not my fault because where I go, Jesus is still with me, whether it's in front of the guns or in this great crowd or wherever I'm at, it doesn't matter. I don't have to be in some little bitty corner with my four friends, listen to some pretty little tape and get goosebumps. I can get goosebumps standing in front of a... Can I, can I get real serious with witchcraft for a second? Maybe a few more seconds. Now this thing is quite serious. Remember Brother Paul when we was walking out of uh, uh, La Paua, or what's the new name for La Paua? Mecatipa. Remember when we encountered the principality that afternoon? <laughs> Let's see what she can handle. You ready? I'm fixing to come out like I am now. I've been covering myself long enough. Let's see if you can handle the real me. Most demons and humans can't. That's why I'm not for sale. I just wish I could call names on mega things that have tried to buy us for a few measly million dollars. <sighs> Let's see now. What must I do here? Let me think. I've done got myself to where I now just about have to tell you this. Before I do, can I share a verse with you? How about Hebrews? Are y'all doing okay? I notice I've only run off about 10 or 15 people, so I'm going to work on the rest of you now. <laughs> yeah. I was approached by a very famous fellow not, well, it was a little while ago, a couple of years ago, and he says to me, he said, you're a great, what you're doing is wonderful, but there's one problem with you. You don't know how to bend around certain individuals. You'll say anything to anybody, anytime. He said, and because of that, we can't accept you. And I looked at him and smiled. I said, thank you, Jesus. I want Jesus to accept me, and he has, thank him. I want to do my best to get along with you as long as I can. But it's inevitable, people of low character, in shallow commitment, and hardly any responsibility in their lives, in very, very thin loyalty, I just don't get along with those kind of people. It's nothing personal, I can still smile at you. See, you got to understand that number one, the kingdom of God, I am owned by them. Okay? Number two, God, gracious as he was, took me after all those years and finally got me placed into a, into a people. He gave me a nation. A people. They own me also. He gave me a wonderful family. They own me also. He gave me a great group of guys. They own me also. So I have very little left that's mine. You understand? So that makes a guy like me pretty free. I don't have nothing to lose. So why don't I just tell the truth? How about that? 
think I will. Okay. Get up in my big four-wheel drive with me. We're going to church. Immediately, you great Americans are in there and you're talking about some stupid new doctrine that doesn't mean nothing. It hasn't stood the test of time. It inevitably won't work anywhere but in your little circle. So it's not the will of God. So I plug in my little worship tape and turn it louder because you just, the more I turn my thing on, the louder you get with your demon doctrine. So finally, you can't go high enough in decibels. And you're forced to worship Jesus with me. That is not a joke. <laughs> and so we're going along and we finally, after a few minutes, get off the dirt road, off the gravel, uh, the paved road. And you're thinking, boy, I thought this was tough. This, this paved road's pretty bouncy, but it's okay. And then we hit a really good gravel road. You think, wow, this thing is tough. But then we get to a substandard by hour rules. Bonafide four-wheel drive road. And you are bouncing around in that cab like a BB. <laughs> God leaves you somehow. I don't know how he does, but the, I don't even recognize the road because of the worship. It's awesome. And then we get to the horse trail and you just are gone. <laughs> Finally, we get to where we're going and you get out with me. And I want you to get this picture. I'm going to paint you a picture. You ready? I've often been called a very colorful fellow. And so, let's be colorful. We meet up with the Indians and you're looking over my shoulder. wondering what they're saying because I didn't take the time and don't care about anybody. So I don't know Spanish or I don't know Indian. I live in my own little selfish bubble and I could give a flip whoever who goes to hell or who don't. So you're just wondering, wonder what they're talking about. Probably about me. Selfish little thing, I could give a flip about you. I just wonder why you're there in the first place. I care about souls. I care about those Indians getting born again. I care that we get another chance to walk up to a new village that has never ever heard of the power of the name of Jesus and say, Jesus is Lord here. That's what I care about. My own protection, my own life, I don't own it, remember? <laughs> so it's all abandoned for Jesus then. Let's go for it. My son, and now he's graduated from uh, these schools that y'all all go to, and he's coming. He's been given a little section of land, and I've given him, I don't remember how many churches, 35 or 40 churches, it seems like, that we decided that it's God for us to give this young boy that's fresh out of school that's been in the mission field his whole life give him some territory let's see if I told him in the meeting I said all right it's great you're, you're man you're pretty and you you know what to say and you know everything to do I said that's great but problem is I don't see those hundred churches I need in that section I just gave you so get up and go get me those churches that's my own son I talk to like that I'm his boss, and, and so family and work don't cross. Understand? And so, uh, but this is awesome. All right, here I am, a daddy I've given my entire life, and I'm, I'm, I've raised this boy right, and Brother Paul's there, and I don't remember who else was there. Was you there, Jay? I don't remember. Uh, we're on our way to make a tea, but we're hiking over over this mountain, and I'm in the back now. I used to be in the front leading and shouting and screaming and hollering, but now... I've gone to the back of the line and I let these new guys, these younger men, take the place I used to in the front. Let them have the experience. Let them lead a while. Let, let me just stand back there and make sure they're leading in the right direction. That's all. And between me and these four or five missionaries, there's a whole group of pastors, older, uh, younger, a whole, and it's just, look, we're, we're hiking up the trail. This, here we go with the smell of the jungle again, the heat. And I'm just sitting back there just weeping because of the sight in front of me. Some of these young men, Indian men, I, I, when I got there, they were brand new babies and now they're men and they're preaching the gospel with us. They're married and got their little families and oh, and it's wonderful to walk behind that crowd. And I'm back in the back back there. 
Thank you, Jesus, that I see another generation that can take the reins of the gospel and I can pass the torch to them and know that it will be kept bright. And I'm just walking back there, just enjoying myself. You know, I was walking for quite a while, several minutes, probably 30, 40 minutes, and an Indian just blasts out of the jungle. Woof, there he is. I got by everybody, I couldn't tell you, because they're really good, these guys. And there he was, and he comes running up to me, and he falls on the ground, and I pick him up because I remember what Brother Peter did in the Bible. Do y'all remember what he did? He took no credit for the anointing of God. He said, stand up, I am a man just like you are. Does anybody remember that? So when they try to give you something that, that's a possession of heaven, do not take it. It's not yours. It's Jesus's. So you stand that man up and you say, thank you. But look up, stand up and look me eye to eye because I'm a man as you are. And he says to me, my mother is dying. Can you please come? And I look at the leader, the Indian leader. This is how he went to me. So I went past him to my son Jody, who is the leader of the section two with this Indian leader. He goes, okay. Now this is fixing to get tight, okay? Okay? This is the real thing. This is what we all teach about, what we all know to be true, but we, we went into the house of a prince of Palate and decapitated him. <laughs> and it's pretty rough, but that's okay. Can, can, can we get gross with it? You know, just tell it like it happened. Okay. I just want to make sure that I don't hurt anybody. So this is tough. Okay. Okay. Good. And so, uh, <clears throat> he's not saved. He just heard that, that we all was coming. And I said to him, okay, look, we'll come. But you got to wait. I got to go preach the gospel first. Remember what we talked the other day? You go. And what you going to do? What are you going to preach? Then you're going to heal the sick. Is that right? Is that how it goes? Is that the order? Yes. So we're scriptural to say, I will come in a minute, but right now I've got to go preach the gospel first. Is this true? Yes. So we're all under, y'all didn't forget. That's pretty good. Where did we ever go? Did we ever go to? Chapter what? Did I say what Chapter. Somebody want to pick one. Okay, go to Hebrews 4. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it fun to be free and filled with the Holy Ghost? Isn't it fun? Isn't it fun to go and face principalities and demons and raise the dead and still be free? Isn't it fun to face bullets and to face the enemies of our God and stay free? Isn't it fun to go through the stress and the hurt and all the disappointments and have Christians rip you off and still stay free? Isn't that fun? Yahoo! I wouldn't bore you with such things as how Christians rip you off because most of you are in such a, I don't know, utopia life right now. You're just kind of floating around. You don't want to hear that. But I can promise you this, I'm a great friend, but I'll make a lot better enemy. Just remember that's your whole life. You hear me? Because whenever the enemy of my God shows up, I am a good enemy. I guarantee you, the devil goes down in the name of Jesus. So we're going along. I told him I'll be along directly, but I said, look here, it'd be nice if you'd invite somebody to this party. Those black magic warlocks that cast a spell on your family, would you please invite them along? Would you mind telling them that I curse their God and he's a wimp? Thank you very much. See ya. Where do you come off getting the right to do that? Where do you come off asking me? 
Just because what you got don't work, don't worry with me. Let me alone. So, we're hiking on in there, and we got there. It was a great service. Remember that, Brother Paul? It was pretty awesome. Holy Ghost fell on us. Oh, it was wonderful. Went quite a while, and then on the way home, we're going, and, and now I'm not in the back anymore. I'm not back in the back enjoying the scenery. Now you're going to find out why I have a job. Now I'm in the front. Every available discernment is working every available gift is intact and we're moving with much caution could I please make a suggestion to you I wouldn't frivolously attack a principality if I was you in the sense of knowing each other for years me and this prince in that sense, we're known as, we're, we're friends, but not a friend of the devil, but we were well known to each other. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're well known to each other. Not in a friendship of good, but in a friendship of hate. Because we will beat him in the name of Jesus. And I know him well, and he's not a good thing. He's a devil, and I will, in the name of Jesus, figure out a way to slide that word of the living God, the sword of the Spirit, into that fifth rib and twist it. God will show me how then before he dies to take it out and take that head. And then take that head and go to Jerusalem and wonder to the people, why are you such afraid of these giants? They fall like any other one. <laughs> That's what you have to put up with guys whose names are David. <laughs> the closer we got, the more we felt. All of a sudden, I feel this wall of energy, and I stopped the guys. It wasn't a good wall. It was a demonic thing. And you could step inside of that wall and out. Men in the crowd begin to cry from the devil's presence. Can you worship Jesus? when you're in front of demonic royalty. Is your God big enough? Mine is. Now then, I'm fixing to go into a couple of adjectives that are probably going to be disapproved of, but I'll put up with the problem myself also. I really enjoy being that close to the enemy of God. It's an awesome, horrible feeling, but it really gets me popping. I mean it. I mean, I can't tell you how that feels. Every hair on you stands up and the blood is burning through you, blood red. It's hot, it's boiling in you. Your heart is about to blow through your chest and it's not because you're in front of your four friends and we're sitting listening to some CD in a controlled environment and getting goosebumps. It's because Jesus in me is greater than he that is in the world. And there's another reason. Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is alive. I serve a living God and his name is Jesus, the word of God is alive. There's not a sword out there sharper. My Bible says the sword of the Spirit, the word of God, is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it doesn't matter the prince's name that's bearing it. It matters that I stand with it in my hands, gripped and bow to the king. And he always tells me what? Go. Preach. What we're going to preach? Did he say only if the areas cleanse the principalities? No. Or did he say simply go, go. Preach. preach and tell them 
the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It wasn't long along the trail. We run into some things. These things hanging in the tree. I froze. I'm looking. These, these things are on me. I can feel it right now. It's, my neck veins are just about to blow. I can feel it. It's wonderful the power of God that can hold a demon prince at bay through men. That's amazing. <laughs> that is just simply amazing. These great warlords of Satan are standing there violent and vicious to destroy us. And step after step you walk through their domain. <laughs> and your body's trembling under the power of the devil and the power of Jesus in you is holding you strong. <laughs> and there's these things hanging in the trees. These warlocks came and it put fill these trees with fetishes. Who knows what that is? 10 or 15, 20 people in here, that's sin. You need to teach on that. It's just simply a point of contact for the devil. It's nothing more than that. It's a demon. It could be anything. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll start doctrines over it. It's all kinds of stuff. We rebuked the devil and kept walking. Calling on the blood of Jesus. I turned to these men. I said to them, I said, I hope you're born again. I hope you're not lying to me because you will die if you're not. Because these boys are not. Never mind. I won't hurt you anymore. I'll use the sword of the Spirit on the devil, not you. And so these... <sighs> these things, we got to the house. The house is covered on north, south, east, and west. It's protected from the powers of any power except the blood of Jesus. And we walk up and these, these spirits are so intense. Some of the men with me are weeping like children. That doesn't make them weak. That doesn't make them beggarly. That makes them, in my opinion, men of honest integrity. You don't try to suppress or hide nothing in this situation. You're very honest and you're open and you ask for the blood protection of the Holy Ghost. Because my Bible says that the Holy Ghost shed his blood in Acts. It says it. And so I'm sitting there and I walk up there and I'm waiting through protocol. Even through this tense situation we have protocol. And they, they said to me, you can come in. And so I stepped inside the door. The lady's laying there on the floor. And I'm, I'm observing her. And I'm not paying attention to what's at my right side over here. I'm looking intently on the problem. And just as I take another step, I look to my right. Guess who's standing there? There's two black magic warlock demons. So what do you do? Oh, Brother Hogan, let's share the love of God with them. Okay, I will. After I chop their devil to pieces, I sure will. You're too aggressive for me. I've already told you that. I knew that already. <clears throat> so you leave the woman that's in pain and misery and you go nose to nose to these demons. You walk right over to them and you touch them on the nose with your nose. And you tell them today in their language in Aztec so that everybody can understand. Today the power and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ will defeat your God. And then you step to the next one. And you touch his nose, you tell him the same thing. And then lo and behold, you can't believe what's right over there hanging in the rafters. They brought their God with them. Can you believe it? What an opportunity. Hanging right out of the rafters was a goat head. I said, this is too good to be true. <laughs> there was things running through me. I was feeling spiked. I was feeling needles. I was, oh, I just couldn't believe it. I almost floated over there to my greatest enemy. And I, he was exactly hung to my height. And we bumped heads, he and I did. Brother Hogan, you're out of your mind. No, remember, I'm out of yours. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you better watch it when that start happens because devils fly. They're scared of that stuff. So when you start worshiping Jesus, 
devils get freaked out. Jesus, you're awesome. <laughs> I like it a whole lot. <laughs> and so, wow, what'd you do, man? <laughs> the devil was there. Ooh. He's everywhere, man. Where are you going to go hide from him? Jeez. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So you tell him, look. Really, scripturally, ain't a whole lot I can tell you, but one thing. The Lord Jesus rebuke you. Ooh, that gets them stoking. So you don't turn your back on your enemy. You back away from him like this, looking at him. You go right down the line in front of your enemies. Just as cautious. Is this not true, Brother Paul? Is this not what happened? Tell them. Oh, we'll get there in a minute. Remember, it happened after. Right after this. You're going to like this. So I walk over there to this grandma, and I kneel down beside her with much respect. She's not the devil, remember? She's in trouble. She has... Now you show the compassion of the cross, not at your enemy. No compromise to the devil. But when you get to the lady that needs Jesus, you take that blanket and you throw it back and you go, whoa. You got a naked grandma laying there. You got sores, humongoid things dripping. Then you got something else. Uh -oh. On every one of her vertebrae down, there's a horn sticking out. Oh, now I lost most of you. Good, good, good. See ya. I reach over there and I grab one of those horns just to see if it wasn't a trick. Surely this is a trick. You know, after all, I am a small bit intelligent. And this is not supposed to happen to humans. So you reach over there. So you grab another one. And them things are attached to that lady. So you look at her and go, Man, I'm sorry, Grandma. And then you turn back and look at those devils. And you say it real simple. You shouldn't have ought to have done that. <laughs> because greater is he that is in me. <laughs> greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Jesus. You see why I like him so much? Because he lets me go into those wonderful situations like that. And he lets me be aggressive and have courage and hold the banner of honor and loyalty and discipline. See, what you do is this. I'll explain what you do. You wait until the situation happens and then you aggressively go after the cross. That's why you lose so many battles. You aggressively go after the cross and then you get thrown into the situation and the cross responds for you. You have to stay ready. We have probably the greatest fighting force on the planet living in the United States, the Navy SEALs. What if we waited till we were invaded before we prepared them for battle? Of course we'd lose. That's why you lose. We prepare them before battle. We stay in a war alert and we are left alone yahoo that's why my family and I and most of these men I work with we fast every other day of our lives that's why I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and seek God for 2-3 hours every day that's why I, because I know I'm not going to have time to tell ok you warlocks hang out just a few days I'm going to go home and fast Oh, excuse me, Prince. Uh, you know what I said? Just hang off on that a minute. I need to run home and fast for 10 days. 
Then you walk over to grandma and say, you know, I would help you, but I'm not ready. I need to run home and fast for two weeks. But what if you believe the Bible <laughs> and you believe that you have a need to stay ready and stay sharp and stay alert and have that devour the, <laughs> the word of life and drink the new wine of God daily. Ah! And stay in his great holy presence. And it don't have to be worked up, conjured up, or whatever else y'all do. I don't know what y'all do. Hyped up. You're just ready. All the war buttons are always red. Do it! Okay. But if you are ready, instead of having to get ready, you can kneel down there over Grandma. <laughs> and you can hug her. And you can tell her, Amanse wala chikawas pan ikuni toteko totiotse. Now the great powers of heaven will come through the Son of the living God. <laughs> and you hold her just for a moment, because it's illegal to do that, but nobody will touch me as I'm in that position, you see. And then you simply touch her on the side of the head and begin to thank Jesus for his precious blood. She's not born again. How do I have the right to do that to somebody that's not even born again? Because I wanted to. Because Jesus did half the time the same thing. Half the time it was his faith. The other half the time it was as your faith is, so be it unto you. And so we lay there and we talked just a little bit and she told me, Thank you, Brother David. <laughs> That's enough for me. I'll go another million miles now. The people I am sent to, that I serve, that I can bring the great powers of God, they look you right in the eyes with weeping and say, Tasca mate, nuikni davi. <laughs> and you look back and say Amotleno Think nothing of it And then you get up And you salute all the people in the house Including your enemies And you back out the door And you tell those boys Listen to me The devil is on the way He don't want grandma no more He wants me and see, that's your job, isn't it? The poor, the defenseless, the people that need help. Aren't we strong in the Lord for, in the strength of Jesus for a reason? Don't we have the protection of the cross and the blood and the word of God and the angels' protections, the legions of God at our disposal? Don't we have the armor of God? Don't we? Yes. Well, use it! the nations of the world are waiting on us to wake up O oh church arise O oh mighty ones of Israel and to let the great powers of God flow through you <laughs> yes Jesus and I told those boys you take off walking right down that trail you don't look back you don't answer anybody you pray in tongues and you worship God and thank him for the blood of Jesus and woe unto you fellows that have hidden sin I'm glad I'm not you because the demon is coming and he's not going to be a headache he's going to be a prince and he's coming to kill us because the greatest wraths of hell have been invoked now because I happen to believe that I have the right to kick the gates off of hell and possess it for my king. Yeah! <laughs> and so we're walking along and it's tense. Everybody's hairs, people are weeping and we're walking, we're walking, we're, we're getting away, we're getting away. 
We're getting away. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, but no, you're not. But you are. You are. Oh, yes. Please, let it be. Let us get away. So we're hiking. Ain't nobody tired now. We're all flying. We came up to this big wood gate. We, we opened the wood gate and out flowed the crowd. One minister right after that. And I'm at the end and I'm looking around. Thank God it's an open field. It's not one of these, you know, dark canopy places. Ooh, scary, you know. It's an open field. You can see. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Shut that gate. I lashed it. We're booking. Nobody's allowed to do anything but sing praises to the blood. Isn't that right, Brother Paul? We're only allowed to speak in tongues and thank God for his precious blood because that's the only thing that can protect you against these principalities. And so we're going, zoom, zoom, zoom. And all of a sudden I heard, I started slow and I heard this noise behind me. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. The gate that was latched, you can hear it. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I turned around. It's standing open with no one there. Then it closes. Ooh. And I told those guys, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Listen, the thing is in the pasture with us. We can't see him, but he can see us. And he's big. And we will win. Now begin to thank heaven for the precious blood of Jesus. Worship the king for the blood of the king. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Oh, God, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your word is true. Let every man be a liar. You're trembling under the presence of the enemy. The thing came right up to us. You can't see it, but I'm telling you, you I hope you never have to feel this. Please, God. I'm, that thing was scary. And then all of a sudden, it burst into a ball of fire. And we're all just going, oh, but, oh, 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 oh. and we're, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that really is what happened. And so we kept on praying and praying in tongues and praying for the blood of Jesus and thanking him. Oh, God, you know, it was a perfect, it was a perfect, you know, you know, it was a perfect sacrifice. J Jesus, remember? Help us, Jesus. Please, your flesh is tormented by these. I don't know how many was there, but it was several of them. But this one big one was manifested, and I go, oh, Jesus, 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 because I've seen that thing several times. Jesus, Jesus, have mercy, mercy. Oh, God, please. Jesus. Uh, and y'all should have seen it. The thing exploded went over the top of the mountain and was gone. And little by little by little, the, the emotion, our emotions and uh, our, everything about us started calming down and we began to worship and thank him and praise him and honor him. And the victory finally came into our mouths. And we was just worshiping God and weeping and crying and shouting and jumping and bucking and snorting and running. <sighs> we was running. That's what happened. But the story is not over there. Because I told everybody, remember Brother Paul, I said, mark the time. Remember me telling that? I said, mark the time. So we marked the time, all of us did. And so a few days later, I think it was probably four or five days. I don't remember all that details like that, but too much. But it was a few days later. We was in another village away, a few hours away. And I'm standing there, same old me, just standing there. Ready to preach. I have gone. And what am I going to do? Preach. What am I going to preach? The you know what? <laughs> the reason I can do that is because it says in my Bible, I, I read a verse, a new one. I got one for you. Ready? It's in Matthew 21, verse 21. <laughs> it's brand new today. I found it myself in the Bible. 
It says all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Isn't that something? Yeah. And y'all listen to me. I'm standing there, service is fixing to start, and all of a sudden you, you see in the darkness, here comes this little crowd of people. They're coming out of the darkness through the jungle, and you're looking at them, you know, I wonder who they are. Mm, mm. Zoof. They walk right up to me. I'm looking at them, you know, I'm bagging up from them. I wonder who these people are, watching for guns and knives and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. This little old grandma, she's standing right straight, looking at me, this flat feet stable and looking me right in the face, which is unusual for women, they don't do that. And she says to me, thank you, Brother David. And I'll back off from her. Where do I know you from? She said, you came to my house not long ago. I said, I ain't so. She said, oh yeah. She said, I was a little grandma what had the horns. I said, what time did Jesus come in your house? She told me it was the moment that thing blew up. The Holy Ghost hit her. Those horns and those sores are gone. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. There were 11 people with her and they all got born again. Isn't that something? Isn't that awesome? Isn't that wonderful? Wow. What a God. I'm going to read this verse with you. And I'm going to stop. And then we're going to trust Jesus for touching us, okay? Mark. Y'all, I can honestly tell you that I feel the presence of Jesus and it's wonderful. It's awesome. But I can also tell you that I felt the presence of Jesus under the thumb of the greater, one of the greater princes I've ever had to fight against. I can also tell you I feel the presence of the, of the Lord Jesus when they got their big guns on us. Circumstances has nothing to do with my emotions. My emotions do not run my circumstances, nor do my emotions run the Holy Ghost in me. I am filled with the Holy Ghost because the Bible says I am. It doesn't say if everything's pretty and I like it. It says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It says for this purpose was the Son of God manifested to destroy the works of the devil. It says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It says go preach the gospel to every creature. Okay, I think I will. I want to read this with you, please. Mark chapter 16. I tell you, I found this this morning. I couldn't believe it was in the Bible. You know that, son? <sighs> Tic Tacs, cinnamon. They taste good. It says right here in my Bible. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want to read this to you. It is so wonderful. I found it this morning, and I want you to believe it like I do. I want you to appreciate it like it's supposed to be. I want me to bow to it greater also. I do I want us to do that, please. Would you just at least consider that? Please. 
Oh God, here we go. <laughs> Mark 16. Uh-oh. Verse 10. Oh boy. The Bible says, my Bible says. She went and told them that she had been with Jesus. I've done my best. I've come here and I've told you I walk with Jesus. I've done the same thing that this lady's done. I've come. I've been with Jesus. <laughs> I hear you weep. I hear you mourn. Just like these people. He is not dead. He is alive. Uh-oh, I'm going to get you, and you're going to get mad, but I can live with that. Starting around this time of the year called Shantolo, where I come from, it's where they all dress up like women and have these massive orgies, and these dead people come back, and everybody has sex with them, and so forth and so on. It's when y'all begin to bow to those pagan demons also, and then you take Jesus, the great king of the universe, and you shrink him to this little bitty thing and you stick him in some little hay thing I, I guess I better just inform y'all he ain't in that stupid box I, I'll tell you one more thing I guess I better inform y'all of some of y'all walk around you got these things around your neck I've seen them and it's made out of these gold or silver crosses and you got him hanging there listen to me I have to tell you something he ain't hanging on that cross anymore. My Bible says he has ascended and sits triumphant over death, hell, and the grave. And he continually makes intercession for you and I. Wow. Jesus loves me. He's interceding to the Father for me. Ooh, let's go for what you say. Come on. Quit your weeping and mourning. You're not defeated. You are victorious. Yeah. Yeah. I understand the temptation. It's not that I can't see the problem. The problem is not God. Jesus is Lord. Okay? Then it says right here in my Bible, it says, huh? And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, comma, what'd they do? They didn't believe. Many of you in here don't believe me what I'm saying. And I'm sorry for that. That's not my problem. That's yours. Because it's true. There's many, many more things to talk about. But some things can't be shared with you. You won't listen. After that, he appeared to some more people. Verse 12. And they went and told the residue in verse 13. But neither believe they them. There's going to be many people come like me. Some of you will believe. Some of you will become like me and other men that are doing something for heaven. Some of you really will. But the majority of you will stay mundane and get mad. It's not my fault, neither is it heaven's fault. You're, it's your choice. And I expect you to take the responsibility for that. And make a decision. I was taught by one of the best, Brother T.L. Osborne. He said, every time you preach, make sure that every time you preach, people you're speaking to make a decision. And so it says right here in my Bible, it says... Afterward, he appeared to the eleven as he sat in meat. And what did he do to him? What was his... For? Look, you got to understand. Don't you understand what happened to him? He was raised from the dead. He showed himself to people. He sent his messengers before his face. And people still didn't believe. So what, what was his message when he come back? I love you, boys. I understand. That's not what he said. My Bible says he upbraided them and rebuked them for their hardness of heart and unbelief. Whoops. 
Well, that's what the Bible says anyhow. It says, and he said to him, uh-oh, here's the go word again. Can you believe it? Why don't he say just sit for a few minutes? But his first words are, go! Oh! But I have to report to you that I am not an explainer, just a reporter. And I didn't write the Bible, the Holy Ghost did. All I do is read it and do it. Okay, is that fair enough? It says here in the Bible, in my Bible, it says, uh, go and preach the God, go around the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes, that's the first thing that's got to happen. And it's baptized, that's the second thing, it, it can be saved. And, but he that believes not, you're a damned individual. Now then I'm going to have to rebuke you just lightly, okay? Is that okay? It may get a little serious, but probably not. These signs shall follow them that believe. One of the main questions asked to me as I go around the whole world is, how in the world do you get those things to happen for you? I believe. Well, why don't they happen? Why can't I have it? You don't believe. I didn't write it. I just read it and believe it. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall do a whole bunch of things. I ain't going to go through it. Oh, boy, I really could. It'd be fun. Cast out devils, speak new tongues, take up serpents, drink deadly things. They won't hurt you. Lay hands on the sick, and they, they go on to recover. So then after he spoke to him, he was received up into heaven. He said, at the right hand of God Almighty. In verse 20, you must see this. As soon as he told it to them, what did they do? Oh, well, I'll be. Can you believe that? They did what he said. <laughs> and they went forth. And preached where? Everywhere. And when they did what he said, it's kind of like if we was reading Matthew chapter 10 again, isn't it? <laughs> they went, they preached, something happened. The Lord was with them confirming the word. Wow. So I suggest we take it at what it says and let's go and do it. Is that all right with you? Yes. Can we do that? Yes. Would you please stand up and let's pray together. I really want to sing some more, if that's okay, just a couple of songs. I really want to repent to Jesus for unbelief because as uh, one of those fellows, uh, you call them by name, I forgot their names already. The, the piano guys? Yeah. Mike. Mike. You'd think I'd associate it with Brother Mike here and everything would be fine. But I associate him having a goatee and he's listening to God. That's what I associate it with. All right. Everybody listen to me, please. It's very serious. Of course it is. Boy, you're too intense. I'm getting there. I'm, I'm working on getting there. Remember the first day I told you all about a little baby that was deaf and the bull and the little package and all of that? Well, the other day we was in a village. Brother Jeff at, uh, I don't remember the name of where we was, that little boy. Uh, it was a while back. They brought up a little boy. It was pandemonium. The Holy Ghost fell. It was like last night. It was just chaos, just wild. And all of a sudden there's this little bitty lady holding on to my leg, pulling on me. And I look down at this little woman and she's got this little, littlest of bitty boys standing there beside her. And I, she was talking to me, but because of the wild thing that was going on, I couldn't hear her. So I just knelt down and grabbed the little boy. And was just holding on to him. Had no idea what was wrong with him. So I was just holding on to him, holding on to him, holding on to him. All of a sudden, that little boy starts hitting on me. Boom, bang, bang, bang. Whoop. Hey go of course my first opinion of course I was a devil had to be beating me up Whoop, he ran out in the jungle Zip, there went the mama Zip, there went the daddy after a while this is really good 
really, really good. After a while, they came back to me, and there's a daddy standing in front of me. I didn't recognize him being with that boy. They were weeping. The mama was. I didn't even remember the little boy. And, I, and they start telling me, this is the little boy that beats you up and run out in the woods. Okay. I was figuring on having to pray for him again. They were all weeping now. The little boy was seven years old, and he had been born deaf. And when I was holding on to his, holding on to his little self like this, Jesus opened both ears and the sound of sound scared him so bad he ran, beat me up and run off. <laughs> Jesus. How y'all doing? You guys really have good talent. I appreciate it. Would y'all let's just worship Jesus for his precious blood just for a minute, please. Jesus, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my Heart in this I see nothing but the blood of Jesus for my cleansing. This I plead nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. My son, Brother Paul, and some of the other guys there were in a village called Agua Fria, cold water. The Holy Ghost fell in the place, and my son's a very serious guy, a lot different than I was more like my wife than me, and in it, because I'm wild and he's calm. And Jesus appeared to him, my son. Fascinating. Jesus was standing there and he saw it. He turned and saw it. And Jesus turned from him and started walking out of the building. And Brother Paul can attest to this. That boy jumped across a table or something or other. Nobody else. He thought the whole world was seeing him like he was. He grabbed the hem of the garment of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus stopped and turned and looked at him. And, and my son will tell you, when he saw those eyes of fire, he let go of that garment and cowed down, thinking he was fixing to get smoked. And Jesus was just staring at him. And he said to Jesus, please, don't go. Jesus says, I have to go. Please, Jesus, don't go. And Jesus said, there's too much unbelief here. And my son said to him, of course inspired by the Holy Ghost, I believe. Please stay. And the power of the king fell on the house. I need you to do something, please. Please. Can you please deal with the spirit of unbelief? Now. Please. In the name of Jesus. Jesus! Go, fellas.